Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have Chris Jensen here today, and she is a life coach, and she just has an amazing story to tell and advice that you're really going to want to listen to. She just launched her book that's going to be coming out in March, and she has written previous books. She's a well-known author, and she's here today to talk about addiction and to talk about other things related to it. So listen to what she has to say, put your ears on because you're gonna be blown away with what she has to tell you. So Chris, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate you having the time to make time for us and tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Uh, thanks, Stacey, I'm so happy to be here. What a privilege. So yes, I am a life coach. I have my master's in counseling psychology and then um, went back to school when coaching came on the scene, because I love coaching. To me, the difference of coaching and counseling or therapy is it's all about what works, not what hasn't worked in the past. So that's really what I work with clients on is moving forward from where we are right now. I have a strong belief that none of us are broken and we don't need fixing. So I do think there's a place for, I definitely think there's a place for heal. Uh, therapy and counseling if someone needs healing. And I refer clients to a therapist if they need to heal from something in the past. My What I do though every day is work with clients as a coach, moving forward from where we're at. And really my niche over the years has become, I help a lot of high performers, um, a lot of creatives. I live in LA and um so my niche has really become helping high achieving perfectionists navigate performance pressure, overcome self-sabotage, <laughs> rewrite narratives and attach meaning to life events and circumstances usually outside of our control, right? Yes. So um, I did write a book called Living All In, How to Show Up for the Life You Want that is available now on Amazon. That has all my favorite fundamental coaching tools in it. Very simple, very, um, I shouldn't say easy, but simple and fundamental, which is so important. I took a chapter from that book and wrote a second book coming out in March called Grace Yourself, How to Show Up for the Sober Life You Want. And this one focuses on our habits, addictions, really gets into that self-sabotage and what we do with performance pressure, how we navigate being, you know, if we are a growth oriented high achiever, how, where is the line between being a driven achiever and a perfectionist? I explained that. And then how that perfectionism can turn and work against us. And, and especially when it turns into needing a soother, which becomes a rich, you know, hab we habitualize a ritual. And then if it's harmful, becomes an addiction. So this book is all, all about that. It's not only I taught, I do share my story with alcohol addiction in the book. I've been, I got sober in 2007. So it's very vulnerable. I share my story. I'm not an addiction expert by any means. I'm an expert at sharing my story though. I'm an expert at serving the person I once was. And that's, who this book is for. So while it does talk about my story with alcohol addiction, it can definitely benefit people addicted to anything, or even maybe it hasn't turned into an addiction, but we have those perfectionistic tendencies that are not serving us and it's turning into self-sabotage. So this book will be fantastic for anyone in that space. I find a lot of times too, is that people that have gone through traumatic events in their life, because it also, you know, um, you know, uh, sometimes addiction and, you know, can be genetic, you know, you see that you know, it's been, you know, you live in an environment, sometimes you take the habits of the people in our, in our environment, um, that you see how they cope with, um, certain things in their life and they used alcohol, let's say as a resource for a coping mechanism. And then the next generation does the same thing and the behavior repeats itself. And then you have people who just had traumatic events in, you know, come in their life and they just don't know how to cope with it. So they use, you know, alcohol, they use drugs as a comfort zone to try to get them, you know, try to hide and mask that pain that's inside them, whatever they're dealing with that they just don't know how to deal with. 
And, you know, and, and, and when you even, t- you know, besides addiction, you know, we go through things in life and a lot of times the root cause brings us right back to our childhood or brings us back to a traumatic event that happened along our childhood. And the question is, is how do we deal with these traumatic events? How do we get ourselves? Because a lot of times people will use comfort um, things for, for to deal with their emotions. So they'll go to food, they'll go to alcohol, they'll go to drugs, they'll go to something that brings them comfort. And instead of using things that are toxic, that will make our life even worse, how can we you know, get through life? Because we all go through obstacles, we all have stories to tell. But the question is, how do we get ourselves over the hump? How do we rise above the chaos and overcome the obstacles so we can just become the people that we want to be, the people, mm. you know, the person within us, that that you know, new version that we in, admire in the back of our heads, but we don't mm. think we can. Right. Um, well, read this book. <laughs> the book, <laughs> I Hold Your Hand and Walk. I hold the reader's hand and walk them through how to do this. Um, I do say in the very beginning, I'm, you know, this is, this is the reader's journey. I, I can't get anybody else sober. I can't get sober for somebody else. I can share my story. And to answer your question uh, for me, a big part and what I share in the book Yes, it's all about patterns. In fact, the patterns was the chapter in the first book that I that I inspired this book, right? Those patterns we we don't some of these are so old and subconscious that we've been living with these beliefs. I think they are about our belief system. Um we've been living with these beliefs for years and don't know it. And that's what I do as a coach is look at those blind spots and, and find where is this belief, this sabotaging belief that's not serving you. We're going to bring it to the surface. And I find a hundred percent of the time that when clients see it and know it, they're very well, especially if they're willing to be in coaching. So we'll start with that because most people that hired a coach or are, you know, they are looking to grow and they are motivated to move to the next level. They're, they are willing to identify that pattern and use grit and change it. It's not easy. It took a long time to, to form that old story, that old pattern. So it will take work after we identify it to put a new pattern in its place. So we talk about that in the book. It, it is going to take grit um right the repetition conditioning i don't walk into the gym do biceps one time and have beautiful biceps right i have to keep keep going because it it took time to establish that old story so with alcohol specifically yes i don't address whether it's genetic or not i'm not a doctor so i don't know and and for me nobody in my family drank which is really interesting my parents mm-hmm. their parents their parents teetotalers. So when I, when I realized I had a gut, like feeling alcohol does not sit well with me. Um, I don't, I think this is harmful. It's just, I knew my relationship to it was not good. I didn't know. I didn't have an experience of anybody else to draw on. And I really didn't know who to talk to. And that's, that's what inspired me to go find a recovery community. And and that's, I write about that in the book, but when we have identified that pattern um, and we can call it a trigger, right? It's just getting curious. And I have great tools for that, right? Like, like get curious. I have one framework called um, feel it, find it, fact check it, frame it, the four Mm -hmm. Fs. So if you feel a way you don't want to feel, stop and get curious, right? And celebrate that feeling. Your feelings aren't wrong. We just we just want to be curious. They might not be helpful if we don't shut it down, right? So then that's find it. What just went through my head? Because something, something maybe even subconsciously floated through our brain to think a certain thing or ask a lousy question. Why do I have to be here? Why does this always happen to me? Why do they always act like that, right? Those questions when they go through our brain will not serve us. So that's find it and then fact check it. Then challenge yourself. Is that true? 
Does this person always act this way? Is this really the worst thing that could be happening to me? Fact check it and then reframe it. So reframe it to something better. Even if you don't believe it right away, start yeah. using that language internally and externally, what you say out loud and what you say to yourself, reframe it to something better. And that's how you're going to change a pattern in your mindset, right? We have physical patterns we can change. That's just with our mind, which is a huge part of changing patterns mm -hmm. yeah do you like to use like um journals like how are some good ways to actually because when people you know get used to a certain pattern it could be difficult for some people to you know a lot of people actually to change bad habits to change mm -hmm. their they have a, a good intention in their mindset, but when you having a good intention in your mindset and then actually doing it and staying consistent can be very difficult. You know, mm -hmm. do you have any suggestions for people when they want to really change the way their life is going? They want to change, you know, they, they either, you know, they don't, they're not happy with their lives. They want to, they want to improve their lives. They're going through things and they, they need to change. So they change their mindset, but now they have to change their patterns and they have mm -hmm. to stay consistent. Do you have suggestions on how to, how to do that? Mm -hmm. And this is where keeping it simple and fundamentals is key. These are not groundbreaking. It's not rocket science. I think we have to keep this self-help stuff simple, right? It's the mantra, the affirmation, the vision board, writing your new. So what I do is have clients, once we've changed the pattern, I turn it into a mantra and that language needs to be very positive, like, and instead of, but, um, not using the word should, um, I will instead of that type of thing. So we get forward moving, positive language, turn it into a mantra, put it on a sticky note or on your phone wallpaper or wh wherever you'll see it right when you wake up and right. And before you go to bed and other times throughout the day, but at least when you wake up and before you go to bed and, you know, we're all different. Um, some of us are more odd, you know, like visual, auditory, kinesthetic, whatever you are, like maybe acting it out, maybe acting out the mantra, right? Using motion and emotion helps a lot. And maybe it's um, reading it to yourself. Maybe it's reading it out loud. Find what works for you. And just do it like the, the, you know, working your biceps at the gym, just condition and repeat, condition and repeat, condition and repeat. And you'll be surprised that what is happening before you even know it. And that's why I tell clients, you don't have to believe the new pattern or the mantra yet, right? Yes. Just do it. And the belief will come later and that's okay. Yeah, I've noticed too, like I went to a retreat, a wellness retreat, and they had you on a specific program. So a lot of the things I wasn't doing, I was doing differently, but because they were very repetitive and they were mm -hmm. doing it, and they went over everything. It was, it was easier to change those habits, you know, and, and after doing it for one week straight, I no longer had the urge to do it the other way anymore. It was like, it was like a total turnaround just by just being repetitive, keeping that mindset, keeping mm -hmm. those goals in mind. Like you said, the affirmations and also thinking about uh, in the future, like, where do I want to be? What am I really looking to achieve? You know, and just holding that as kind of like a, a, like a little bit of a, a long-term hope goal, you know? And just, you know, by doing that, it was very easy to break those, you know, habits. The first and second day, I'm not going to lie, it was a little, it was a little difficult. But then as time started to, you know, go on, it became easier and easier and easier. Mm -hmm. And I think it becomes just a part of your lifestyle to the point where then it becomes natural, you know, and that's, I think what people have to get to that point where it, it becomes natural, because I, I think if we keep thinking, okay, I have to do this and I have to do it because of this. It, it makes it harder. But like you said, if you change your mindset and you just make it a part of your life and you, you get through it, it becomes a lot easier, I think. Exactly. Yeah. The old pattern became second nature and it wasn't serving us. So mm -hmm. make the new pattern set. It will become second nature. Oh, it will. It just will. You've got to keep going and believe that. And you just explained grit, right? It wasn't easy those first two days. And with something like alcohol, if somebody's getting sober or the pattern is 
a very, it's maybe, you know, it's more than just our mind. It's, it's, it's very physical. Also, that is going to be 90 days instead of one or two days or 30 days. It'll be different for different people, but there's a lot changing in our brains and our physiology when we, when we dump an old pattern and start a new one and we've got to grit or have grit as we go through that. And that's where I have people, um, another simple fundamental is know your why, right? So write down your why, know why you want what you want. Why do you want to become the person you want to become and just commit to that because mm-hmm. all kinds of things will pop up cravings. I talk about commitment versus cravings, right? And you're going to need to go back to that commitment in mm-hmm. that 90 or 30 or one to two days, whatever it is for somebody, when you need that grit and when you need to change the pattern, you've got to know, be crystal clear on your outcome. Definitely. Definitely. I feel too, that a lot of people that are going through anything in life, you know, any kind of obstacle and even addiction, they feel very alone. You know, they mm-hmm. feel like they're it all by themselves. And I think that's what even makes the addiction or makes the problem even worse is that they, they feel like they have no one to go to no one that understands them. And, you know, there's so much support out there, you know, how much, you know, what do you, you know, what's your view on support, getting help, you know, having that group of people that you could relate to and, and share your stories and share your emotions with. It is everything. I I don't I don't personally believe we can kick this type of thing or get sober without community, without on our own. In my recovery community, we have a saying that addiction is the opposite of community. And mm-hmm. so, and that was true for me. I I say that in the book over and over again. I explain how community helped me and even how I tried to do it by myself. There's a funny story in there about that because, you know, a lot of us that have addictions are high achievers. We do, we're very, it's not, this isn't about discipline or willpower. We're, we're crushing it in all these areas of life. We have a lot of willpower, a lot of self-discipline and, and in this one area though, like for me, alcohol addiction, I was, it was, it was consuming me. So that was, that used to be really confusing to me. How can my life be, how can I be doing all these things? And this one thing isn't working. And so my, my instinct was to just take care of it on my own. I got this. I don't need anybody else. And that, that absolutely won't work. It didn't work for me. And so I think it is different though. I do want to make this distinction I think it's just wonderful right now that sobriety or going alcohol free is a health trend. I love it. I love all these mocktails. I love, right. The the alcohol and liquor sales are down in bars and venues with that serve the Gen Z population. I love, I have three kids. They're all in their twenties and, um, yeah, it's just a different culture than it was when I was in college. You know, it was, it was, you know, it's, it's easier to not start it now. Right. Um, and that said, I don't think that somebody going alcohol free as a health trend, I'm not talking about that. I don't think that person needs a recovery community. I think, you know, that's different. I'm the book and my story is about what those of us who already got addicted to it, we need recovery. We don't just like, I call it sobriety. It's not just being alcohol free. It's emotional sobriety. I need a community. I need to work a program because I did have, you know, I did grow up in the culture I grew up in and the time I grew up in. So I did have those experiences. And so to reverse a pattern that big takes Mm -hmm. more help for people like me. It takes community. Oh, a hundred percent. And I feel like too that, you know, it's not an easy road, you know, when, especially when you're talking about what drove you to drink and what, what drove you, you know, to, to, um, to, you know, the pain and, and all the things that, you know, you experienced that was overwhelming to you in your life. But I feel like, you know, it, it takes time 
it can be, it's very painful because you're bringing up all those repressed emotions that you, mm -hmm. press, you repressed for so many years or so whatever time it took. And now you have to deal with them. And, they, and the more you deal with them, the more they come up and the more you start to realize all the little tidbits that you didn't realize before. But I think once you get over the hump, I think it's mm -hmm. like a new world. It's like, you know, you, a, a feeling of glory, you know, and a freedom, you know, that you're, you're kind of freed from these chains that held you back, you know, and didn't let you be the person that you were meant to be. Mm -hmm. How do you think? I agree a hundred percent. Um, my story, which I share is that I was sober 13 years. And then in 2020, we moved to a new state. I'd never been there. I was a brand new empty nester. The, the youngest had gone off to college. My husband, the two of us, we, I've been married 29 years. So we, um, we moved to a new state and I didn't have, I didn't find that I, I had let my sobriety become just, it just, you know, it just, I was just sober. I was just Chris who doesn't drink. It wasn't a thing. And I, I lost that um, kind of euphoria about it, that it's really magical. It's really a miracle and it's such a gift. And I had forgotten that we moved. And so I forgot why I wasn't in touch with my why. And I thought, you know, I don't think I have a problem. All these things I kind of numbed myself with all this pressure of being a, a young mom, pressure of trying to be a good daughter, all these things. Um, I don't have those anymore. And now I'm a coach and I, you know, I know I have all these tools. And so I thought, I don't think I, I probably can enjoy a drink socially. And so after 13 years of sobriety, I invited it back in. And that, like you said, how you get through that, it's really hard and you have all these raw emotions when you get sober, but then it gets really great. Well, mm -hmm. this is what I want people to know. It is way easier to stay sober than get sober. So mm -hmm. I, you know, it had, I don't, I don't, it, it was a relapse, I guess, but I'm not, I don't really call it that. It's not like I went out on a low, as you can see, I went out on a high thinking, yeah, I don't think I need to be sober anymore. And knew, I knew right away, like within the first week, that was a tear. Like I absolutely need, need sobriety. I missed my sobriety fiercely. I cannot tell you how difficult it was to get it back after I broke that streak, all that mm -hmm. shame came in all that day counting all and I put all of that in the book. So I think the book is great for someone getting sober for the first time, as mm -hmm. well as someone who's maybe gone out like I did and come back because I just wrote in detail about all those feelings I had to I was back in touch, I forgot how difficult that was. And so and so worth it. So yeah. worth it. I mean, you do have to, so I, I created more coaching tools, right? Put, put them in this book for gritting your way through that difficult part. And yeah. so absolutely, I agree with you. It is once you're, once you're over that hump, it's the greatest life and lifestyle for me, I can imagine. I mean, that was the thing I realized right away. I don't deserve a drink. I deserve sobriety. Sobriety is the reward. What have yeah. I done? I missed it fiercely. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, but I did have to fight to get it back. It was really hard and it took community and, um, you know, I'm, I'm all back in the happy place now and I'm yeah. happy that I wrote about it. I'm happy. I wrote it down. If it can help some people, I'm, I'm happy. And I'm sure it will. I think, you know, what did you feel that was um that made it so difficult the second time so when when you went back to drinking you know what why was it harder this time than the first time to get back to the point where you you had sobriety in your life and mm -hmm. you continued where you left off a lot of it was my own pride things i had to work on my ego like um like thinking, oh, I stained my, is that perfectionism? I stained that perfect record. And yeah. really I knew when I was younger that I was a self-sabotaging perfectionist, right? As a young, young gal. Um, yeah. 
but I hadn't thought about it in so many years. And I think that's because of sobriety. I'd been humbled and I'd um, had, I, I just hadn't really had to look at that as much as I did the second time going, wow, I care way too much. Like I should just jump back on my into my sober life. And I realized I cared so much. Uh, there was all this shame again. I cared so much that I'd broken this perfect streak. So I really, and that's where the grace yourself comes in, right? I really had to wrestle with that and go, okay, you, you, you're human. This isn't, this isn't about your accomplishments. Sobriety is a win, whether you have one day or 30 years, right? right? And so we all just have today, we all just have this moment. And that's what the sober community and my friends that I have now reminded me of, right? Nobody cares. And nobody in, in if, if you're in a sober community, it doesn't matter which one it is. There's so many to choose from now. Nobody yeah. cares. Nobody's counting your days. If they are, if you go to one meeting or one, you know, group or Zoom call or whatever, I just want the listeners to know that and you hear something you don't like, that's not the the majority of the group. That's one thing. So one saying we have is focus on the similarities, not the differences. And the similarity is sobriety. We're all there fighting for the same goal right? Yeah. We're all there sharing stories. And that's how you do it. You share stories. And we're all experts at the person we once were. And we're just yeah. there to encourage each other. None of us are addiction experts. We're not medical doctors. We're not, I mean, maybe somebody is, if they are, I don't even know it. That's the thing. We don't talk about our jobs or what we do. We just share our stories and encourage each other in our sobriety. And we all have the day we have right now, the hour we have right now. So I had to tell myself, okay, Chris, you, you don't have one day again, or one, you know, six months again, or whatever I worked myself up to, yeah. you have 13 years plus this, right? You had, so we can't just be focused on the, how we think we messed up because those mess ups aren't, they're not mess ups. So we've got to grace ourselves. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, what are you trying to accomplish with your book? Like, what do you really want to, your, your main goal? Now you explained why you wrote the book, but you know, what, what are you really looking to accomplish? What drove you to the, the point where you had to write this book? Mm -hmm. I want people to know that they're worthy, their worth and their value it they're worthy if they're addicted yes and they're worthy if they're not that does not change and that's a big that's really big with me and it's really become the mission of my life to to love to love god by encouraging his people i'm um christian so that's why i say it that way i don't only work with christian people but my my god is um i say to love god by encouraging his people to know their self worth and that's right. just, that's just, that's what drives me to write and coach. And right. so I just think people, for me, there's a big part of the book was my belief system. I have a coaching tool about these, how to change your beliefs. Like when something happens and there's a truth, a fact, how we attach a story to, or a narrative to that fact becomes our belief. Right. right. And so for me, I had a belief way back before I first got sober that I was a monster because I couldn't stop drinking. And, and I wasn't, I didn't see that pattern in any other area of my life. So I had a belief I was a monster, which was a weird belief because I wasn't, because I was, you know, a mom and doing all these other things. Um, as soon as I changed that belief to I'm, I'm worthy and valuable and deserving of a sober community yeah. because I'm addicted, then I was able to get sober and stay in that community. So that's really what I want. That's my agenda for the book is for people to finish it and go, yep, I, I'm worthy. Maybe I had a lousy belief that, that I wasn't. And maybe even if I didn't tell myself that I, I might've thought that subconsciously, I want people to drop the shame, know their worth and know 
however many hiccups you have, even if you haven't started your sober journey yet, you're already, you can't get any more valuable than you already are. You already so worthy. So, yes. and I think once people embrace that, the getting the life they want will come much more naturally, right? right. Not that it's going to be easy. It will be something they actually want instead of something they think they should want. If yes. that makes sense. Yeah. It does make sense. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to take everything we discussed today, what are some things you'd like to emphasize that you really want the listeners to know and understand? Mm, that, that's really what I want them to know is what I just said. Yeah. And if you're looking to get sober, yes, get the book. My book's not going to save your life. It'll certainly be helpful because sharing stories is helpful. And I share my story. The number one thing I want people to know is you, you can't do it alone. If you're not doing it as a health trend, if you feel like you've crossed the line where a, a soother or something you were using to soothe yourself became a harmful addiction, mm -hmm. then you've got to get into a community. And I, um, so I will have, since the book comes out in March, I've already developed a bunch of, I wrote a workbook. I've written some workshops that I'm going to do with groups who want to buy the book in bulk. So I have mm -hmm. a limited amount of VIP upgrade packages available for mm -hmm. listeners, um, between now and launch day. And the great thing, one thing, even if you buy one copy what you get is if you want, you can be in my Grace Yourself community. And the whole point of that is not another online sobriety group. I don't, I'm not, we don't need another one. I think there's some fabulous ones working really well for people. Mm -hmm. um, the point is I will be in there to help people with this question, help them find a community that works for them because mm -hmm. we can't get in this debate about what community works and which one doesn't work sobriety in itself is a win but there's different communities because we have tons of different personalities just like there's different churches and different therapists and different coaches for people so i'll i'll be in there to help people guide them to a community that will be helpful for them to get to get people plugged in that sounds wonderful yeah that sounds now where can people find your website Chris Jansen coaching.com Jansen's J A N S S E N. So Chris Jansen coaching.com there will, um, they will be able to go to grace yourself book.com. And that's where you'll see all these upgrade packages that are available right now. Uh, if the, if you forget that website, go to my website, Chris Jansen coaching.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at Chris three Jansen also. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. If people are interested in your coaching, can they go on your main website yes. to um, sign up and yes. maybe sign up for packages and so forth? Exactly. Yes. All the, my services are there. Packages are there. My email is there. So you can reach out to me and ask questions. And I do a, um, a complimentary intro session just to find out if we're the right fit to work together. Oh, I love it. And do you have a newsletter also? I do. You can subscribe to it on the website. It's all on my website. Yep. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, Chris. I thank you so much for coming on this show. I'm so glad that you took the time out to write these books and that you're launching your other book and it'll be out in March because I think this is something that so many people struggle with. They struggle with addiction. They struggle with a lot of issues in their life and, you know, having guidance, having a protocol, so to say, you know, of ideas and tools and strategies that they could use to incorporate in their lives to get them to the next level in life, to be able so they don't feel stuck. They don't feel that this is the only way that they have options they can improve themselves they can have a better life you know it's so important and I, I really give you kudos for you know to helping others and and you know gearing them in the right direction because there's so many people out there who do struggle with addictions and really need that type of help so thank you so much and I, I really appreciate your time and for you coming on the show as well no oh, thank you Stacy I appreciate you and what you do and all the people you're helping Oh, thank you. And you have a great day. You too.